Good morning and happy Victoria Day weekend. This is the weekend I get to wear white pants without judgment. It's been exciting here this morning. Um, there's, there was, a, and there may be again, a bird loose in the sanctuary. And uh, I'm afraid of birds. So my brother let me watch Alfred Hitchcock's movie when I was about seven years old, and it traumatized me. And uh, so if you see me hitting the deck, I have not become Pentecostal and have been slain in the spirit. It's because I'm afraid of a bird. But uh, thanks to Marcus and Wayne's uh, um, uh, quick action, when he flew out, they closed the doors, we got the door, and we think he's gone out the way he came, probably through the bell tower. So just, just want to warn you. Somebody said it was the new dove of uh, the spirit, but I don't know about that. <laughs> We have a few announcements uh, this morning. First of all, um, just a reminder that next Saturday, for those of you especially who are sewers and crafters, the um, fabric and craft market will happen in, this, in the uh, Fellowship Hall on next Saturday from 9 to 1. So come on down if you do this sort of thing, and there will be some great deals there. Um, Summer barbecues begin next week. I know so far next week we've got lots of, uh, lots of help um, for our community barbecue, but if uh, you are free some the last or the fourth, no, the last Sunday of the month during the, uh, during the summer and want to help out, please see Will or Wendy. Um, the United Way has, has a campaign on right now uh, called Period Promise, and it's for women's uh, hygiene products. Um, there's a, going to be a booth at Seaway Mall next Friday between 4 and 7 to collect donations. You can bring actual donations or you can um, drop by and uh, make a financial donations. Also, I've noticed that um, there's a uh, set up in all uh, Meridian, Meridian Credit Union uh, branches. So either place, you're welcome to, to give. I think that is all for now. Yes? Okay. <laughs> um, so let's continue to worship as we have been. As we think of Ukraine and places where there is conflict throughout the world, we light the, we light the candles of the colors of the Ukrainian flag and we pray for peace. Let's pray, pray together. Our God, one of your names is the Prince of Peace. And we know that it is your desire that we as a people live in peace. And you give us peace. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia and Eastern Europe where tensions are high and people are nervous. We pray that arms would be laid down, that hearts would be changed, and that peace would prevail. And these wonderful people of Eastern Europe would be able to continue on in a life of, of thriving and growing, and most of all, thanking you for the peace that has been restored. We pray this for other places in the world where there is strife and conflict. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's read responsibly our call to worship. From comfortable pews from tricycle seats, from easy chairs in front of TVs. At kitchen sinks, at laptops and blackboards, at nursing stations. In communities gathered to pray, in memories of those who served, in families grilling in the backyard. Let's sing together as we look to the screen or in our hymnals, number 334, all hail the power of Jesus' name.
Let's pray together this prayer of Thomas Merton. O God, we are one with you. You have made us one with you. You have taught us that if we are open to one another, you dwell in us. Help us to preserve this oneness and to fight for it all our hearts. Help us to realize that there can be no understanding where there is mutual rejection. O oh God, in accepting one another wholeheartedly, fully, completely, we accept you, and we thank you, and we adore you, and we love you with our whole being, because your being is in your being. Our spirit is rooted in your spirit. Fill us then with love, and let us be bound together with love as we go our diverse ways, united in this one spirit which makes you present in the world and makes you witness to the ultimate reality that is love. Love has overcome. Love is victorious. Amen. sounded great this morning. You were the elite eight this morning. Uh, I know some of my buddies are here. Ryan and Bill and Emma. Come on, come on up. So far we're bird free, so it's good. <laughs> uh, 
I like your dinosaur shirt. Very cool. Hey, Ryan, come on up. So I have a question for you guys. Where, what, what kind of organizations or groups of people do you belong to? Can you think of? Well, I'll, t I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I belong to my family. I'm a Lockwood. I belong to this church. I belong to the Stevensville Connect Club. Um, those are some of the things I belong to. Now, could be clubs. Where do you guys, what school do you guys go to? So you belong to Glendale Public School? You run debate club at my school. You're part of the debate club at your school? You run it. Ooh. A woman in charge. How about how about this group of people? Yeah, you guys belong to the church, because if you come here, we love you and you're part of us. Jesus talks about, in when he, before he ascends to heaven, he talks about the importance of where the disciples belong. And uh, Ryan obviously is not sure where he belongs right now, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> but I don't know what Lori's going to teach you to this morning, but I know we're going to talk about where we belong and where God brings us so we belong. But the great thing is, we all belong. We all should be where we are. All right? So let's pray. Ryan, you want to come over and pray with us? You want to pray from a distance? You can pray from a distance, okay? Let's pray. Oh, God, thank you for Bill and for Emma and for Ryan. And I pray you would bless Lori as she teaches them about, I know they're working on some stuff about Joseph. And I would pray that all of them would feel a deep sense of belonging, that here they are loved they are cared for, and we're just happy to see them every Sunday. Bless them this day and in the week to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys. We want to take some time to lift our, our blessings and uh, our concerns to God. As, uh, um, as we know, he loves us and he cares for us and he hears our prayers. Let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you for all the blessings of our lives. We thank you for this weekend, which for Canadians kind of marks the beginning of summer. We get our gardens ready and we plant them or have others plant them. We look forward to the growth and all the things we can do outside when it's warm. Thank you, oh God, for the blessing of living in a climate that is temperate that we have the seasons, that we see your creation as we watch our plants grow and then we reap a harvest in the fall and they go back to sleep for the winter months. Thank you, O oh God, for belonging, for being part of this family, for being part of the United Church of Canada and being Canadian. We are reminded this day that we are connected even in a small way to our heritage, to many of our heritages um, in England and the, uh, and the royal, the monarchy there. Oh God, we pray for wisdom as a country, that we would be known, continue to be known as peacekeepers, those who fight for justice. May we be agitators and, and um, protesters when our systems do not produce justice and give compassion to the least of these. Lord, help us to, in a loving but challenging way, call our MPs and our councillors and those in power who make decisions to voice our opinions, but we do so in a respectful way. Lord, thank you for this city and for its wonderful heritage and its new identity and the growth that we're seeing and sometimes we're a little overwhelmed by it, but we're no more overwhelmed than our great-grandparents were when they came here to build the canal, to work in the steel mills, to see the boom of post-World War II. So help us to be encouraging and positive in the midst of change. We thank you for all those places where your name is lifted up. And it doesn't have to be a united church. It can be a Baptist or a Pentecostal or a Presbyterian or a Catholic. 
Wherever your name is lifted up, indeed, you are there. We pray for our family members at Linden Park Community in, in uh, Hamilton. We thank you for this congregation that has been there many, many years. We thank you for its leadership, and we pray for vision for them, and may they be a, a place of, of love and acceptance in the midst of a hus the hustle and bustle of a city, much like Welland, only bigger. We pray your blessing upon us. Give us vision, give us courage, give us compassion as we reach out to those um, who might not yet know you, but certainly could use your love, your grace in their lives. We pray for those who have specific needs, whether they're going through treatment of a physical ailment or a mental ailment, whether they're recovering, whether they're anticipating a procedure. You know their needs, O oh God, and we pray your blessing. We pray for Karen and Roland and Jim and Mike and Steve and Howard and Heather and Sharon and Cynthia, Wanda, Linda, Ian, Pat, Annika, Dina, um, Lori, Crystal, Nancy, Rita, Carlos and Leonora and Ron, and Barb and Larry and Brent, and Teresa and Christine and Carol. Again, God, you know their needs. You know where they are and how they're feeling. So we pray that they would be lifted up by your spirit. Use us to be the tools of compassion in their lives. Help us to reach out with a card or a phone call just to let them know that we're praying for them and we miss them. Make us instruments of your peace, O oh God. Help us to bring people into our fellowship and may they sense a real belonging as you have given us this task to go out, to not stay put, but to go out into the world and reach out to anyone who has a need to love our neighbors as ourselves. And we thank you that you remind us of these truths and this mission as we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This weekend, I heard an amusing story of a fellow who was uh, at a party at one of his siblings. And someone he didn't know came to him and said, uh, So, are you a friend of Cam or Cheryl's? And he said, Well, neither. And the guy kind of looked at him quizzically and said, then why are you here? He goes, well, he said, you asked if I was a friend of Cam's. He says, no, I'm his brother. So, <laughs> so as we sing what a friend we have in Jesus, indeed, Jesus is both friend and brother to us all. Let's look to the screen and sing together.
We want to thank you for your generosity as you support the ministries of this church. Let's pray together. Oh God, in this season of sowing seeds and tending our gardens and preparing them, we are reminded that those who sow sparingly reap sparingly, but those who sow with generosity reap an abundance of blessing. May these offerings be seeds so that indeed we would reap an abundance of love, of care, of kindness, of a handout, and of service in this community. Thank you for these gifts. and We commit them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. The first message this morning from the scripture is from Acts 1, verses 6 to 14. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. The second message from the scripture is from John 17 verses one through 11. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you had given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you for I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God.
There's a classic psychology experiment where the professor tells a group of his psych students to go stand on a street corner and stare up at the sky and point. Maybe they're looking for a renegade bird somewhere. And guess what? Without fail, lots of other people start gathering around to look up at the sky and try to figure out what the students are looking at. As the angel says in the reading today, men of Galilee, why do you stand there and look towards heaven? They seem to have their head in the clouds by the casual observer. Have you ever been like deep in thought or kind of in your own little wor world and walked by someone you know, not even recognize them, kind of looking past them? Your head was in the clouds. Have you ever had that experience? I know I have. That's kind of what was happening with the disciples. They were distracted, and they didn't have a clear picture of where they belonged. If we are going to be entirely literal about it, it actually was Jesus who had his head in the clouds and his entire body and his feet. That's the point of the ascension. He's taken up bodily into heaven, but from a metaphorical point of view, it's the disciples who have their head in the clouds, standing there with their jaw dropped. And wouldn't you be the same? Yet, out of the 12 verses in the one reading, only half a verse tells us about Jesus going up into heaven. Almost all the rest in Acts is Jesus giving the disciples instruction about what they're meant to do next, what happens when they turn the page. And that does not just involve standing there, pointing upwards with their mouths open, going, wow. Jesus is trying to give them instructions and a sure place before he leaves to rejoin the Father. You see, the importance of the ascension lies in the words that Jesus says to his disciples before he ascends anywhere. He knows that if anyone needs grounding, it's the 12. He knows that if there's anyone that needs to get their head out of the clouds, it's the disciples. Just when the disciples were busying themselves with wonder about what would happen next, just when it would have been so easy for them to get distracted by all that was going around them, just when they could have spent the next several hours with their head in the clouds, wondering exactly where Jesus disappeared to, Jesus brings words to them and us, and those words bring us back down to earth again. Get your head out of the clouds. You've got work to do. The terrible temptation that the disciples of Jesus face is it's so easy to get lazy thinking that Jesus will sort everything out when he returns. We even go to great lengths predicting when exactly Jesus will return. Perhaps so we don't have, have to do any real work. And so first Jesus and then the angels say, people of Galilee, why do you stand there looking up towards heaven? Get your head out of the clouds. You've got work to do. You belong to the mission. And it begins right here and right now. You've got work to do. As happens often, the disciples kind of miss the point. It goes over their head. Lord, is this the time when you'll restore the kingdom of Israel? But Jesus reminds them of their place. It's not for you to know the times of the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. This is where the, you belong. You have work to do. I must say, I get a little nervous and try, uh, with people who are overly obsessed with things like the end times. When is Jesus coming back? How will it all unfold? And all the theories that goes along with it. Because scripture clearly tells us we're not to worry about that. I think it's far more important that we're doing the work now and here, and our attention is on that and not on what might happen in this generation or 10 generations from now. Ascension 
Ascension was actually this past Thursday, if you look at our liturgical calendar. And if we were Catholic or Anglican, we might have had a special service on Thursday. Some people think that Christianity is just something you do on Sunday morning. Well, I guess those people haven't listened to Jesus. I mean, what's all this about ascending into heaven on a Thursday? Surely he knew he was meant to do it on a Sunday when we were all here. But of course not, because the disciples, as for us following Jesus, isn't something we can pigeonhole into one day of the week. Once Jesus has gone back into heaven, he tells them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses into Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Those places he specifically mentions are figurative because that really was the world then. So now we just could really skip to the ends of the earth. That's, it's not a faith that restricts you to a Sunday. That's a seven-day-a-week sort of faith. The apostles could not take the gospel to the end of the earth as a once-a-week hobby, and we cannot either. As the prayer of St. Teresa of Avila goes, Christ has no body now on earth but ours, no hands but ours, no feet but ours. Ours are the eyes to see the needs of the world. Ours are the hands with which to bless everyone now. Ours are the feet with which Jesus is to go, to go about doing good. This is our task. This is where we belong. Jesus going up to heaven is part of the equation. He goes up so the spirit might come down so we can go out. We are to be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth, in Welland, Ontario, and to the ends of the earth, even, even uh, Dunville. Thank you for that snicker, Brad. And we're to do it on Sundays and Thursdays and Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Friday and Saturdays, seven days a week. Norm Cates shared the humorous story of a Christian who was very keen on the idea of sharing his faith, but really didn't want to do it, was very reluctant. Every morning, our devout brother would pray this prayer, Lord, if you want me to witness to someone today, please give me a sign to show me who it is. One day, he found himself on a bus when a big, burly man sat next to him. The bus was nearly empty, but the guy sat right next to him to our Christian friend. The timid fellow anxiously waited for a stop so he could exit the bus. But before, he could, but before he could get very nervous about the man next to him, the big guy burst into tears and started to weep. He then cried out with a loud voice, I need to be saved. I'm a lost sinner and I need Jesus. Won't tell, someone tell me how to be saved? He turned to the Christian and pleaded, can you show me how to be saved? The brother reverently put his hands together, bowed his head and prayed, Lord, is this a sign? <laughs> it's okay to laugh. I'm sure we at Central United are not like that. In fact, I've seen many of you do a lot of sharing your faith in many different ways. But if we're feeling timid, we're not going to ha we remember we don't have to do this on our own. You will receive power from the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He goes up so the Spirit can come down so we can go out. Imagine an aircraft standing on an airport runway. It weighs tons and is firmly clamped to the ground by the force of gravity. It cannot possibly fly. That is, until the power of the jet engines are turned on and the laws of aerodynamics come into their own, providing that there is a force that can easily overcome gravity. Every time I fly, I don't know about you, but I marvel at the fact that this heavy metal tube can reach heights of 30,000 feet plus. It's, it's almost a miracle, and I love takeoff more than landing. So it was with Jesus. Death and the grave could not hold him. 
when his father raised him from the dead in a glorified body, and in like manner the earth could not hold him when the time came for him to return to God. He was simply lifted up, operating under higher supernatural powers. Jesus no longer belonged to the earth. And under a similar power, he sent down the Holy Spirit to enable us to do the impossible and to change the world. As a man called Vance Havner said, we are not going to move this world by criticism of it nor conformity to it, but by the combustion with, uh, within it of lives ignited by the Spirit of God. Just like the roar of the engine when the plane takes off, only a million times more powerful. Jesus goes up so the Spirit might come down so that we can go out. Many of you know the name Richard Daly, who was mayor of Chicago for 21 years, between 55 and 76. He was known as a rather forbidding guy to work for. One day, one of Mayor Daly's speechwriters came and asked for a pay raise. Mayor Daly responded in his usual smug way, I'm not going to give you a raise. You are getting paid more than enough already. It should be enough for you that you are working for a great American hero like me. And that was the end of it. Or so the mayor thought. Two weeks later, Mayor Daly was on his way to give a speech to a convention of veterans. The speech was going to receive nationwide attendance, uh, attention. Sorry. Now, one of the other things Mayor Daly was famous for was not reading his speeches until he got up to deliver them. So there he stood before a vast throng of veterans and nationwide press coverage. He began to describe the plight of veterans. I'm concerned for you. I have a heart for you. I'm deeply convinced that this country needs to take care of its veterans. So today, I'm proposing a 17-point plan that includes the city, state, and federal governments to care for the veterans of this country. Now, by this time, everyone, including Mayor Daly, was on the edge of their seat waiting to hear what the proposal was. He turned the page and saw these words. You're on your own now, you great American hero. <laughs> Today, we celebrate that we are not on our own. Jesus has put, put us in this place and in this time for a specific task. We all belong here, not for our own comfort, not for our own edification, but to share our faith in all the ways we are given opportunity, whether it's handing a grilled hamburger to someone or sharing of what God has done in your life. Jesus is sitting at the Father's right hand to intercede for us, and that he sends his Holy Spirit down to give us power and courage to change the world. This, right here, right now, is where we belong. Jesus goes up so the Spirit might come down, so that we might go out. Amen. Let's look to the screen or in our hymnals and sing together, We Praise You, O God.
Just a reminder that everyone is welcome to join us in the fellowship hall for a time of fellowship and a good cup of coffee. I now receive this blessing. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.